Hello and welcome to the Powered by Rock podcast, where we're going to be speaking with Troy Cook of the San Diego-based rock band Ready, Set, Survive today. This band has been playing together for the past 10 years or so, releasing an EP and several singles over the years. And they have just released a brand new EP called Aim for the Brain that came out last Friday, August 19th. Of course, I'm recording this before that happens, but you'll be seeing this just right after it. Troy is also the host of a very cool podcast that highlights all the cool bands in the San Diego area called the Palapalooza podcast. Did I say that right? Or is it? Palapalooza. That's we what I've heard. Too. I've heard we, we get a Palapalooza. lot. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Palapalooza podcast. We'll be speaking with him about the music and the podcast right after this. You're listening to the Powered by Rock podcast with your host, Isaac Kuhlman. The Powered by Rock podcast was created to help showcase some of the best rock musicians in the world and to pass on to future generations the rock music that has inspired rock bands around the world for decades. We want listeners to be able to hear great stories and life experiences directly from their favorite artists, as well as dig deeper into music theory and talk rock like no other show you've ever heard. This isn't about looking cool. It's about getting real and having a great time. Without further ado, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Power Rock Podcast. I'm excited for today's episode because I get to bring on a really talented guy who uses his abilities for good across the music community as well. <laughs> Troy is All the caffeinated singer. up. Yeah, Troy is the lead singer and guitarist as well as keys uh, on one LP or one EP in the yeah. band Ready, Set, Survive. And he's also the host of the, pa- the Palapalooza <laughs> podcast, a little bit of a tongue twister there, which helps promote the music and bands uh, and music of bands in the San Diego area. Welcome, Troy, to the show. Dude, Isaac, thanks a lot for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to have you here. It's, I feel like we share a lot of kind of commonalities, and it's good to kind of bring two similar minds together in that sense. Um, I don't record too much music with bands anymore, but I'd like to. It's just been a long time. Uh, but let's kind of talk about some of the stuff that you, you're getting into before we kind of go much further, because most people who probably watch this aren't familiar with Ready, Set, Survive. But, uh, you know, that's kind of a good thing. It gives you more visibility. It's kind of a, hey, new to the, you know, the anybody who watches this might be like, Hey, that's a cool band. going to go check them out. But it's kind of just a brief treatment. Uh, give, give everybody who's not familiar with your band, who you guys are, why you started and what, what's with the uh, ties to zombie and horror movies. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. I have all <laughs> sorts of uh, horror stuff around me actually. So we're just kind of, you know, I'm into horror. I wouldn't classify us as like the Jasons or, um, I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say that we're a horror band, but yeah, you're you know, not like our, horror core where you're like guar or something like that. Yeah, no, no. We have <laughs> references. I have a song called "Every Day Is Halloween." Uh, we sprinkle it in there. I was kind of thinking that the other day. I was like, we are really mar- branding ourselves as like a horror punk band, and we're, you know, we really aren't. Like there's yeah. there's one song off this EP that's available now, "Aim for Their Brain," that is about zombies, and it's kind of a double entendre about. Uh, how humans can act like zombies sometimes too. You know, when I drive yeah. down the street, I see zombies. Uh, yeah. So it's sort of a, you know, so there's a lot of double entendres in our music a little bit. Uh, we are a punk rock band, pop punk, melodic rock, uh, based out of San Diego. Um, got together in 2017, not quite 10 years, but yeah, uh, we have. It's like chemistry. I keep going back. I'm like, how long is seven? Is it seven, eight years? I'm like, I'm just gonna say about 10. I don't know. It's close Dude. enough. <laughs> That's a good estimate, bro. Close <laughs> enough. Um, and we're really just having fun. You know, I played in local bands here in San Diego for uh, 20 plus years. Yeah. I'm super old. I'm getting getting ready for retirement here soon. Uh, <laughs> and and just sort of a fun project. Uh, I got to shout out my guys, Sean Drake on bass, Morgan Guest on drums. Super solid dudes. Uh, I think that what contributes that's what contributes to our longevity is they're just drama free drug free uh you know career minded dudes that uh have allowed us to stay together for a long time the three of us have been uh together since the start since that first uh ep so yeah and you did have another guitarist but i think he's he's moved out to the east coast or something so kind of yeah I got to shout him out too, uh, Scott Ziekla. He used to manage the uh, epicenter down here. I don't, I don't know if you you would know that because you're up in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ziekla is a, Scott Ziekla is a legend, man. He's done a lot of touring with multiple bands. Uh, he's an original uh, CPK, they call him down here, uh, Crazy Poway Kid. Gotcha. Um, 
But uh, yes, shout out Scott. He's now on the East Coast. Uh, when he gets out here, we try to play with him. He may be playing that October 7th show with us with uh, the queers. Uh, but Scott's the man. He kind of he sent over some ideas for this uh, new album because I play guitar and sing. And you probably know it's good to have another guitarist sort of provide their input, right? It's, it's yeah. great to have like a second. It, even if you're skilled, even if you're the best guitarist on the planet, it's still good to have that like different perspective and different styles. Yeah. So he provided that a bit on this new uh, EP that's available. Yeah, unfortunately, every time I send my work to some of my friends who are guitarists, they're like, here's what I would do differently. I was like, that's too much work. They just work. say, oh, fuck off, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or you just never hear back from them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, are, do you play in a band? Sorry, the host. Uh, no, I just brother. kind of like, I have all my stuff behind me over here on the side. Hold it's it. like a studio office area but uh haven't played in a band i played drums last in a band back in i want to say like 2015 that's when we kind of stopped because then oddly enough the lead singer got uh married well got a girlfriend moved to san diego because she got a job and then lives there now so nice. uh, i might have you look him up because he's actually i don't know if he's still playing but he was awesome the band was called two-eyed cyclops pretty funny <laughs> love it <laughs> goes with our horror type theme right a yeah bit. kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah so now let's talk about the podcast real quick because this is something that you know when i started it was kind of for two reasons one because i just had a son he's 18 months and almost 19 months old now and i wanted him to understand that there's a his yeah thank you there's a history of music that i'll probably forget more than i ever be able to tell him so if he ever wants to learn about some of the music i like he can go back to like this podcast or some of my own music or some of my you know, record collections, kind of that stuff. And you can check it out. Um, but the other one was because I loved music since I was like, I don't know, six years old and started playing guitar when I was 11 and have never stopped wanting to play or, you know, metal or mess around, write songs. So it's awesome to be able to bring people like you on here and pull, you know, pick your brains about the processes of songwriting and all that stuff. But kind of talk to me about why you started the Palapalooza podcast and, and why did you decide to specifically stick to the San Diego area? I kind of feel like you represent that, that, that city and that, that surrounding area pretty well. Oh, it's nice of you to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Palapalooza and good job on the pronunciation, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people don't know, but uh, I, a Tiki hut is also called a Palapa. So gotcha. I have a Palapa in my backyard. It's a pretty big Tiki hut, 10 by 15 feet. And I have local bands over and they perform acoustic. It's very acoustic, tropical vibes back there. Yeah. So I have punk rock bands go acoustic. I have hip hop guys that come over that do, uh, you know, sort of uh, performances, uh, any genre, blues, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, and it was honestly, I always shout out my brother. It was kind of his idea. Like I got this tiki hut in my backyard. Dude, you should have like bands over and, and do a podcast. Uh, and it just... I started it out as a, a audio podcast. We were talking off the air. Yeah. Um, much easier than what I'm doing now. Yeah. <laughs> just a few mics, just audio. Um, super shitty audio uh, from the start. You know, I've learned a lot, as have you, I'm sure, yeah. about EQ and uh, compression and all that good stuff. But yeah, so, and then that kind of uh, formed into uh, video. So now I'm doing, I have the Palapalooza channel on YouTube. And it is, uh, I, keep, I try to keep it like under 10 minutes, man. You know, yeah. people's attention span these days. You got to get in and get out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll do, the, I'll have them come over. They'll do one song under the Tiki Hut. And then I'll do a, a quick interview. Like, yeah. what are your influences? Who do you hate? Who do you love? Get yeah. the fuck off my show. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, you know, we were talking off the air, like I, I go back and forth. Like I do like to sit here and just shoot the shit too. You know, I kind of miss that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, Palapalooza, man. We've been going for like four years, four years, uh, uh, 220 episodes in four yeah. years. So like no joke, every week, even through COVID, I was like on the phone with like, you know, I, I was able to, uh, to, to get on the phone with like uh, Unwritten Law, the singer of Unwritten Law. And yeah. um uh, the guy, uh, Sonny and Marcos from POD, uh, when we were all locked down, I got some opportunities that maybe I wouldn't have, uh, without the, the COVID crisis. Yeah. Cause they're bored so, of shit too. And they're like, sure, we'll talk with you. Yeah. They're like, sure. I'll talk to this <laughs> asshole. Why not? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's been a really fun endeavor and it has, you know, I've, 
I've, I've had Eric Wilson over from his new project, uh, Spray Allen, the, the bass player from Sublime, you know? So I've had, okay. you know, I've had Wade from Unwritten Law over who was like, that's my biggest influence, dude, growing up. Like the Black Album, Unwritten Law, or uh, Oz Factor, Unwritten Law. Wade was playing drum, drums on those uh, albums. So it's been a rad opportunity for me to like connect with these influences and like legends yeah. in my mind and, yeah. and get to know them a little bit more. Um, so yeah, it's been a cool, really cool and really fun experience for sure, man. It's awesome. Yeah. And we'll, I'll talk more about the uh, San Diego influences and all that kind of the stuff about that a little bit later. But uh, I think that, you know, the idea here is that might uh, people who m might not know that much about San Diego, if you go watch your podcast, there's a lot of bands in San Diego. I mean, it's not a small city, it's but it's not a huge city. Either. It's not like New York or, uh, you know, L.A. size, but it's California. Everybody's in a band in California. I mean, that's that's like the thing. Like, right? You right. find a drummer in every neighborhood. <laughs> right. It, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of venues. There are a lot of bands. But then yeah. I feel like kind of like our sports teams down here, like there's also a lot to do. So yeah. maybe that can have an effect on draw out here sometimes. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I don't I mean, know for it sure, supports but I, bands, but it also doesn't mean that people want to go out and support bands. Like the venues will support bands, the v bands will support venues and all that stuff. But it's like, because it's so everywhere, it almost kind of ruins the appeal for people to go out and watch something. Yeah, I feel like there, there's a tight knit, knit community here in San Diego. You got the indie rockers, you got the hip hop, yeah. you've got the jazz community here. You have the punk rockers for sure, the the indie rockers with like these guys, Aviator Stash, are killing it yeah. down here. And they all are very supportive. It is like a big, sometimes di dysfunctional family, you know, music yeah. family. San Diego music scene is it for, you know, way before I was even born has been pretty amazing man and yeah. uh it has well, i think they even have like the san diego music awards which is like yeah. 20 or 30 years old now and i'm like how is that mm -hmm. possible that's crazy yep san diego music awards yep they just announced the uh, next april at humphreys by the bay it's all outside it's it's totally cool uh, cool. You can smell a lot of marijuana and there's uh, <laughs> there's a giant bar and everyone just gets together and it's always super friendly. There's never any sort of uh, co any conflict. So, you know, everyone gets along here pretty well for the most part. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah, remember, it's a, yeah, I was going to say, I remember one of the last times I was in San Diego, not the last time, but one of the last times I was there for a business conference and a bunch of guys from England came over and they're like, wait, you can smoke weed here? So I was like, yeah, let's go down. Let's take a little e-scooter down to this dispensary and we'll come back. Yeah. And we were high for like 12 hours. <laughs> nice, nice. Could nice. not stop laughing. It was pretty funny though. But uh, yeah, that conference was kind of a waste. <laughs> <laughs> there are dispensaries literally like a mile from me, man. I mean, it's so yeah, wild. Exactly. Like growing up, I'm 40 and uh, I used to smoke the, the Mexi, you know, back in the day where yeah. it was, you know, it's obviously illegal when I was growing up, but now it's like, you can just go in and they check your ID and you have all of these like amazing, like top of the line edibles and yep. different strains and everything. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as much into smoking, but it's, it's pretty impressive to see how that industry has uh, progressed. <laughs> yeah. Now here in Vegas, they're going to be have, having pot lounges where you can go smoke at the place that you're buying Hell it yeah. from, Hell which yeah. is the next level. It's like a nightclub for weed. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I legit think that if alcohol is legal, weed should be, dude, 100%. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So aside from marijuana in the San Diego scene, let's talk about the new EP, obviously called yeah, Aim for the Brain, because uh, we are recording this, like I said before, it's released, but it will be, you know, released when people will be able to hear this. I have had a sneak peek of three of the songs, which all sound incredible. Uh, this is your first studio EP. I want to say studio kind of in quotations. I don't know if you guys recorded in a studio or did it on your own, but um, obviously the pandemic happened in between as well. Uh, what's the process like to get started from your from like 2017, your self-titled EP to now, because you have done some singles, even covered your own songs on keys as well. So what kind of, what, what got you guys back in and what was keeping you from recording another EP in between? That's a good question. Uh, I feel like I was writing maybe a little bit more during quarantine, right? You got a little more time. <laughs> so a couple of those, Welcome to New Decade is a, a song that I don't think I sent you, but um, a little more just straightforward pop punk and that is obviously covid and 2020 inspired welcome to a new decade so i wrote that just i guess more more writing 
uh, you know, that's a good conversation. Single versus EP. What's the best strategy with Spotify and with all the algorithms? And we were talking yeah. off the mic. Um, but but yeah, we, we just I guess we just had more songs, you know, ready to go. And we wanted to just go for it. And Adam Cisco had recorded our boys from the rough, another rad local band uh, here in San Diego. Very melodic rock. Uh, he has worked with uh, Avenue Army, uh, Infinite Signal. So we were really excited to work with uh, Adam Cisco, uh, who recorded it, who mixed it and mastered it. And I think you can, uh, I think you would agree, dude. It's it's pretty full sounding and a pretty good, Absolutely. pretty solid recording, right? Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I still get blown away by how people can record such good stuff with like such limited you know, even just in their house, I'm like, how did you record that in your house? Like, I've tried to do that. It doesn't sound anything like that. But, you right. know, there's you don't need as much equipment these days. And you can record at studios that are way less expensive than old days where you had to sit and, like, pay a $1,000 an hour or whatever it was. Some crazy shit back in the late 90s when I was, you know, in a punk band. I am right. 40 as well. So it's like, <laughs> I remember the I days. I know, dude. I, I look back. Super expensive. <laughs> yeah, you look good for your age, man. I thought yeah, you were thanks. much younger. Yeah, we're both older. I just, have, I just had a kid. That's why. You, okay. You've had a kid yeah, longer than me. Getting, you're getting started a little later, huh? Yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> not bad, dude. It's better than yeah. getting started at 19, dude, which I, yeah, for sure. I have a lot of friends that did that. They get, get started like right out of high school and it doesn't work out too well. But anyways, yeah, I digress. So yeah, the, yeah. yeah when, we, when, uh, when I was in my first band, Fat Chance, in 1998, we spent $8,000 on our recording. Fuck, um, which is, in 98, was a fucking lot, right? That yeah. is still a lot. <laughs> um for a full length but fortunately my singer's parents were rich so they covered the bills nice. <laughs> but um but yeah to sort of reinforce your your point about like home recording so we have an acoustic song on this album it's track number five called uh the fractured and i recorded that right here with one microphone and direct acoustic gu guitar this guitar right yeah. here and then we sent it overseas to joe marsh in the uk who's worked with uh nights like thieves my buddy nights yeah. like thieves and he just like totally made it you know worked his magic and made it professional sounding and and beautiful dude and like i don't know what the hell i'm doing really and yeah he, he really you you really can do that and i think that's the direction we're heading is just more uh, a way to like just streamline these songs because i mean th this ep took a year to 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 track yeah. And uh, I think we're all sort of, we all sort of contributed to that taking a while. I, I feel like that is a long time for a four song EP. Sure. Uh, not, not to blame anyone, uh, but you know, uh, I, I like writing music and I want to get it out there as quickly as possible. So I, I think I'm leaning toward just home recordings and then having someone mix and master it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know Joe Marsh's work is pretty damn incredible. I've, 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 I see a post on Instagram where he's like, tracking the vocals for nights like thieves and there's like 30 vocal things i'm like what yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> why i i got to do, do like two tracks of vocals <laughs> <laughs> yeah mario really layers the the vocals dude and all of his yeah. shit sounds amazing but yeah joe i can't say enough about uh we we worked with a couple very professional guys man uh joe and yeah. and cisco and joe marsh's turnaround time is super quick and uh it, it's pretty amazing dude to like grow up from 1998, see mp3.com come out, you know, the MySpace days into, you know, gradually transitioning to this time where you can just strum around, record on a crappy little interface and then send it out to these professionals like what, 8,000 miles away and yeah, get, get an amazing recording. So it's yeah. pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear because, you know, everybody's got a little different thing. Like people, you know, mostly people will just try to do it themselves and slave away and try to learn all the new techniques on all the DAWs and everything. And it's like, man, that is a pain in the ass. And I try to do that. And that's why I spent three months on a 10 album or a 10 song album. And I was like, I, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> if, if, if I don't learn anything else or if I learn anything else, it's just going to complicate this and make it sound any worse. So I'm just going <laughs> to do what I can with what I've got and just make it sound as good as possible. That uh, was yeah, another, I, I was, yeah. I was just, I was doing it on my own. So I wasn't paying, sure. I was never going to make any money on it. So I wasn't paying for, you know, anything. It was just kind of more to get these things recorded. So I have a history that they ever existed. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That was another big reason that I'm doing acoustic sessions for our podcast, because I just did not want to mess with drums. Yeah. You know, 
and and yeah. I live in a res. It's a residential area, so I didn't want to have a bunch of drums, you know. Yeah, I think you got like a cajon though, so people can use that. Yeah, yeah. We have a cajon. If, you know, yeah, a, if a they know how to play it. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't. I yeah, I have a guy that makes and masters my my uh, episodes. His name's William Driscoll. He he's filled in for Unwritten Law. He plays in a band called State to State, and he always gives me shit like. I mean, yeah, it sounds good for a shitty cajon. Like, <laughs> he's not a big fan of the cajon, so. Yeah. It's, it's, I never was either, and then it made sense, like, so my dad bought one, I think. I think he bought one, or he learned how to play one. He's like, yeah, I take it out to, like, the woods and go camping and play it. I'm like, well, that makes sense, because, I mean, no, you're not going to lug a drum there. set out into the woods. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's one benefit, too. Bands are always like, man, this is amazing. Like, the load-in, you know, they don't have to worry about all their amps and gear yeah. it's all pretty much direct for the most part yeah. you know you, you plug in and i give you headphones and it's it's pretty simple straightforward yeah. that's awesome yeah. so like i said I've, I've been able to hear a couple of these songs uh the couple of songs that i have heard back from the dead and how do we escape if you look at just the titles now i'm, I'm kind of trying to fill in some blanks with the with the lyrics because i don't i don't i didn't have the written lyrics but i can hear enough of them and i feel like there are some nuances obviously with the zombie stuff but do any of these things go in chronological order and does this ep kind of tell a overarching story i know that there is some analogies obviously between what's going on in the songs and what's you know everyday life and relationships and stuff like that for example aim for the brain uh this is kind of like when one person's turning into the zombie right and it's like shoot me um but it's also like you know hey i'm turning into these people who are also you know, stand in line all day and stare at their phone all day. It's like, shoot me, please get me out of my misery. <laughs> right. Right. I feel like a lot of these songs are open for interpretation. Like my brother thought aim for their brain was like a political, had like political undertones. And I was like, bro, I, I really didn't have that in mind when I was writing this <laughs> at all, dude. Like I did not, you know, uh, let's not get into politics, but it, yeah. I, I like songs that are sort of open for interpretation a little bit. Right. Like they yeah. don't come. Although aim for their brain is very zombie. Um, so to answer your question, not really a chronological order of, of songs. It wasn't intended. I'm sure it, it could work out that way. But um, How Do We Escape, honestly, was like, so you know the scene in Batman where young Bruce Wayne is going down the alleyway with his parents? Yeah. And he gets killed? Or yeah. the parents get killed? Parents get killed, like yeah. That, was, that, was, that totally inspired How Do We Escape. I wrote that a okay. long time ago. It was, I was going to say, if he gets killed, then that's, that really makes Batman real short. That, that ends Batman. There's never any <laughs> Batman. So we always joke around in the band. That's the Batman song. You know, it's about yeah. uh, as the shadows formed without being worn, they came. How do we escape? Hold on to my hand. Don't cry. Everything will be all right. It's about like a couple that gets uh, murdered in an alleyway. Um, Interesting. And then Back from the Dead is really like, I couldn't even tell you specifically what it's about. I think it's more <laughs> about like, like becoming more aware for the most part. But then gotcha. it does like have some double entendres like Back from the Dead, obviously like a zombie sort of yeah. uh, re reference a little bit. But really becoming, to me, it's like that song, like Back from the Dead, like you're, you're becoming more motivated and uh, more aware and ready to do what it is you want to do with, with your life kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I don't know what the track listing yet, but is as I, as I listen to an order, it was aim for the brain. So now you've been shot, you're dead. Uh, you, you are becoming a zombie back from the dead. Oh, the bullet didn't kill you. So you rise back up. And then how do we escape? The other person becomes a zombie and you're trying to flee the zombies. So that's how I saw it. When I was <laughs> that is the it. order too, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then it ends with welcome to a new decade. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I guess you can of a new it. world where zombies can live free and, and not be zombies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I feel like there was some COVID references. Like I wouldn't, you know, the, the first line of the chorus is uh, they're saying to stay home. This isn't yeah. a game. No, you know, it's, it was, I think there was some COVID uh, inspiration there for sure. But yeah, um, yeah I just, uh, I don't know. I've, I've always loved horror. I'm a big like Halloween Michael Myers fan. I dress up like Michael Myers every, every fucking Halloween since I was like six <laughs> years old. would go down on the corner of the street and mess with people. So it's just That's like funny. one of those fun things for me. Like it's, it brings me back to my childhood a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't want to be like a total horror punk band though because sure. i don't i don't personally like that 
I don't know. It doesn't appeal to me to like come out and I don't know. I have a song that talks about like Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers, but when I hear other bands doing that, I'm like, eh, kind of cheesy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the band, the metal band, dude, that that does it? Um, really hardcore metal band that's super popular that does the horror. I mean, Guar is a pretty big one that's been around for decades, but I'm not sure if that's the one you're talking about. They are just no. like all dressed up like, yeah, I don't even know. They have like apocalyptic demons. I'm not really sure what the hell they are. Yeah, they have um, the huge. Props yeah, they like concerts. fake chop people's heads off in shows and all sorts of crazy shit. But that's the that's the biggest one I know of. I don't know if there's other ones out there, but there yeah. definitely is. I know there's the Jasons on the East Coast who I've had on the podcast. They wear the uh, hockey masks. Gotcha. Uh, you know, live. This yeah. guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But there's another one, and it's going to come to me as soon as I, I finish up here. I can look it up on my phone, but I don't I don't want to yeah. get on my phone right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, well, let's talk let's talk more about a little bit more about what's kind of happened in between since obviously some, the first EP and this EP. You did it's kind of a sort of an EP. It's a it's a collection of cover songs of your guys's that you did on keys. I'm, I'm assuming it was you, right? I mean, yeah. I've seen you play piano on Instagram, so I assumed it was you. But uh, you kind of re released your own songs in a I guess in a more somber melodic tone while doing them on keys. So how did the idea come about from that? And have you uh, like, have you been playing keyboard and piano for a long time or is this something you kind of learned recently? Yeah. Thanks for checking that out, man. That, yeah. So keys was released 2020. I was just bored in my house and I was like, Hey, let's cover some of our songs and release them. And I had Adam Cisco, the guy that recorded our latest EP mix them. Um, nice. And he did a great job with it. So I started playing keys when I was six years old before I started playing guitar. Gotcha. Um, so I started playing with like Jerry Lee Lewis as my influence, maybe some Elton John. So I actually started on keys. And then when I was a teenager, piano isn't cool. So I grabbed the guitar and started playing in punk rock bands. Um, yeah. Was, was the piano something that your parents got you into or were you just always wanted to tinker with it? It was sort of, I don't know how that came about, but it, I, I do recall like just bugging my parents for a keyboard and they were always very supportive. Um, I know my grandma played piano, but she passed before I could even get to know her. So yeah. she's really the only one in our family that, that did play um, from what I, from what I know. <laughs> I'm not, gotcha. I don't come from a very musical family. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. Thanks for asking about, about that, because I, I feel like I want to start incorporating more piano and acoustic guitar in future recordings and maybe even do some solo stuff. Uh, yeah, I feel like piano is sort of my first passion for sure. So I was pretty yeah, proud was of that. Say, have you ever thought about doing any of the songs live on piano at all? That'd be really cool. That's it's just hard to set up, man. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I, I have a I have a keyboard uh, downstairs, but. Yeah, I guess I could, or even get another uh, keyboardist to play with Ready, yeah. Set, Survive. That would be really cool. I like that. We had a violinist for a while. I don't know if you saw that. I did, we did not. Have, we cool. had Regina Tolley. We were doing the yellow card kind of thing there for a little bit. I thought I thought for some reason that that might have been you playing like keyboard violin, you know. Oh, in the recording, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like Young and Dumb and Perfection, those were actually live uh, violin. That was Reg Regina That's Tolley. That's cool. And she Very was nice. playing with us live too for a little bit. Everyone yeah. would just, yeah, dude, you guys are like yellow card. Like they wouldn't even listen. They would instantly just see the violin and yeah, you're yellow card. <laughs> like, and eh, not yeah. really. If you listen to our music, not really, but yeah. okay. All I right, mean, I if you're pop punk, you're always like some other band from the year 2000, right? A hundred percent. And I want to throw <laughs> out there that, you know, I'm 41 and I'm really trying to stray away from pop punk. It is yeah. in my blood. Like I'm a Blink-182 Green Day guy from, from the nineties. So. Yeah, I love melodic punk, punk rock, but we are starting. I would like to go that how do we escape direction or even back from the dead. I wouldn't personally consider that pop punk a little. Yeah, more I mean, and that's like the thing. Cult. Like when when we grew up, it was like grunge and punk were like the two kind of off center. Not, Definitely. you know, they, they became nationally recognized, but they were underground kind of rock music at the time. And so it was either punk or grunge kind of thing. And then kind of pop punk stemmed off of that. Uh, but there's and also emo, like, right? emo yeah, exactly. it, yeah. it's a, that's basically pop grunge, if you want to call yeah, it that. I mean, it's, sure. just, it's just a more melodic version of grunge where you have better singers, basically. Um, <laughs> that's totally <laughs> true. That's funny. And less, <laughs> less uh, power chords, right? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Or like guitar so, layers. 
Yeah. And I think if you, if you don't think in terms of like, Hey, we're a punk band or Hey, we're, you know, a grunge band, you literally could just span all those genres. Cause they're so similar. You can kind of segue through them very similarly. So it's like all punk pop, whatever you want to call it. I think what it is, is just good rock music that isn't popular. I mean, it's, it's like kind of anti-pop music in the rock genre. Uh, but that's kind of a mouthful to say. <laughs> right. Rock, <laughs> rock these days too. Like I, glass animals got like best rock. Uh, artist in one of the award shows which if you yeah. know glass animals i mean it's more like hip-hop pop yeah it's, it's like pop. 21 it's like pilots, pilots is even considered it drives like, me nuts i'm like this isn't like, rock music <laughs> yeah like rock these days is like fun like imagine dragons right yeah and, and 21 pilots like mainstream yeah uh rock i would say oh like on the forefronts of like uh, what i would consider still rock would be like maybe foo fighters yeah but even like panic at the disco has gone like pop right exactly so and, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Foo Fighters are probably the only ones that are kind of still making, well, I wouldn't say, but, but it's on a mass scale, right? Like, to where people would know instantly, like, right. Killers, Foo Fighters, like. Green yeah, Day, they, I guess, still, you know. Yeah, they kind of, they, they've definitely gone a, a bit more pop than than punk mm -hmm. lately, for sure. But, yes, yeah. Um, what are you going to do? I mean, you got to sell records at that point because you've been on a label for so long. They're, they're going to want their money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I try to steer away from the old man bitching about today's music. You know, it's all yeah. music. It's all art. It's all creative. Right. Sure. Even if you don't like it, you know, back in the fifties, they were complaining about Elvis. Right. And chicken. Yeah. And and I, I'm the same. Like I love, I love a bunch of new bands, but I just do not like bands like imagine dragons, <laughs> 21 pilots. Thunder? Cause when I hear them, I'm like, this is absolute dog shit, but I don't know why people like it. It makes no sense to me. I have, a, I have a question on my podcast. Uh, if you could wave a magic wand and make one band never exist, who would it be? And we had to retire Imagine Dragons like within the first couple months. And Nickelback. Nickelback has that, Nickelback has that stigma attached to him. Yeah. Uh, people just don't like him. But I've had a lot of people defend Nickelback, man. Yeah. Uh, good musicians with, with their guitar riffage. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I got into some Nickelback songs back in the day. I think they're good songwriters, but... I used to tell this to some of the business, the people I coached in business, right? So I would say, you want to try to make your business successful overnight, just like any band wants to become successful overnight. And everybody thinks, oh, like bands like Nickelback, they just became famous. They didn't have to work hard at it, but they had to play those shitty, the shitty songs that you heard on the radio right. probably 10,000 times before they ever got famous. So if right. you hate Nickelback, just think of how much they're sick of playing those songs. Totally. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's all music, right? It's all yeah. just communication and um, it's, it's, it's all good. I like yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like, like what you like. I mean, it's, I'm not here to hate on popular rock because it keeps, you know, people wanting to play guitar and inspiring new generations. I just hope that they dig a little deeper as well. Cause the radio is not the end of rock and roll. <laughs> I do. I do have to defend like Greta Van Fleet. I know they got, you know, they're the Led Zeppelin cover band and they get a lot of hate, but at least those kids are like rocking, man. Yeah. They're fun. You know, they're like, holy shred. shit. <laughs> and they're good songs, dude. hundred percent. They do yeah. kind of have that Zeppelin sound hundred sure. percent. No doubt about it, but yeah. Uh, yeah I, I mean, like, I like seeing that. Yeah. There's, there's bands that sound like screeching weasel in the pop punk genre. They don't get ripped on like Greta Van Fleet. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, uh, the San Diego kind of network of bands. Uh, I'm wearing one right now. Actually, Urethane. Oh yeah, dude. I saw that. Um, I think that's the first time I saw your podcast when you had Urethane on. Yeah, that was season one. They're awesome dudes. I mean, I just reached out to Tim and, and or I can't even remember how Tim or he reached out to me. I can't really remember, but um, super down to earth guys. I mean, Steve Caballero's in the band, and he's a super nice, humble guy, and he's been famous since he was like 14 years old or whatever, 11 years old from skateboarding. Uh, been in punk bands since the seventies and you know, the, the, the San Diego scene. Now I know they're from Carlsbad, which isn't technically San Diego. Well, that's where their kind of home base is right now or whatever, but you know, nights like thieves, you got some, you know, so many other bands in that area that are, you know, even Blink-182 is essentially, I don't remember which suburb of San Diego, but they're from that area. Yeah. Power. So yeah. what does the San Diego scene kind of mean to you as someone who promotes it and almost as like an ambassador to kind of talk about it to the rest of the world? That's nice of you to say. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, if you think about San Diego for people up there in Vegas or, uh, you know, nationwide that listen to this, uh, you got like, let's shout out all the San Diego bands, man, like Jewel, Switchfoot, P.O.D., uh, Rocket from the Crypt, 
the schizophonics are doing big things. Uh, so many, so many big bands, Blink-182, Unwritten Law. A lot of bands have uh, birthed out of, of San Diego. Um, to me, it's like, it, it's, it's like a family in a lot of ways. Like some of, you know, I met Mario playing. He's a good friend of mine. I have like yeah. solid like brothers here in the San Diego music scene. Um, not everyone gets along. There's always that 1%, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even in, even in family, that's got to create a rift, but uh, yeah. It's, dude, there's always it, some arrogant egomaniac in any in any amount of people who just wants to stir shit up for some reason. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm guilty. In the last 40 <laughs> years, I'm guilty. Guilty as charged. Yeah. But uh, to me, I mean, San Diego's cool, man. It's it's uh, great venues, legendary venues. Um, the Casbah, right? So, which I'm sure you've heard of. The Casbah, yep, yep. so, Soda Bar. You got to... Uh, I was I had the opportunity to put on my own Palapalooza show right before COVID at House of Blues oh, nice. uh, through a contact at Live Nation. So that was really cool. I have put on a couple of Palapalooza shows at the Holding Company. You have like beachfront venues down here that are really cool and like yeah. Ocean Beach and uh, best weather in the beach. United States, too, aside from maybe Hawaii. But San Diego, great beaches, nice right. weather, like. If you want to go to Florida, you can do that, but there's no point because you can go to San Diego. It's much better. <laughs> that's one thing that, yeah, that's one thing I forget of is we are a beach, beach community and we do have these cool beaches with live music and, and venues. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if people are watching and you're in a local band, reach out, reach out to me and I could probably steer you in the right direction. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't, I, I don't want to be a promoter. I don't want to yeah. put on shows. I, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't pay very well either. <laughs> it's yeah and it's just a lot of it's a lot of work and i think there's better people out there that that do it you know there's people yeah. out there that are a lot better than than although my palapalooza show was pretty sick <laughs> uh, we, dude i was i don't know how i how i got that created man but it was a free show all ages at house of blues it was a thursday night and we brought like 600 people that's awesome you know yeah it, it's it was all local bands i had these guys rosedale uh, my own band, Ready, Set, Survive, played. Fishing for Chips is a rad uh, punk rock local band here. And uh, nice. there was another one, too. So, yeah, lots of cool venues, but but lots of bands. You know, it is um, – it's very saturated. Lots lots of great, healthy competition, I feel like. It, yeah. We're all keeping us – keeping each other at this certain bar. We're all trying to strive to be better. And when I see Mario doing rad stuff and bands like Avenue Army and The Rough – I want to keep up. I want to at least be at their level, you know? It's, yeah. it's, there's some pretty, in my opinion, pretty good bands down here, man. But yeah. I would imagine there's talent everywhere, you know? I would yeah, imagine. well, yeah. I grew up in North Dakota, and I was the only punk band at the time. No so talent like, in North Dakota? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except there was North other, Dakota. Yeah, there was one other punk band that graduated when I was just getting into ninth grade, and they were kind of like the big band at the time. And yeah. then they disappeared, and then we were kind of a band for about two years in junior yeah. and senior year. and then we all broke up and went to college. And so that's kind of how it was right, like, right. like there was other bands, but I mean, like, for example, we did a battle of bands on a talent show where we played in front of a couple hundred people each time and a battle of the bands. We won it, but we only played against five bands. So it was like, that wasn't very hard. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was probably just because we had more friends in the audience and, you know, even the other people's, you know, fans were booing us. So it was like, sweet. That's just louder. The little volume meter is going to make us win. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah it, it amazes me i do the podcast and i have a local band every week dude so i've had like 220 bands in my yard in my backyard and there's still like bands that hit me up that i haven't heard of it's yeah it's pretty crazy uh it's yeah. pretty it's pretty awesome you know and they're all they're all good you know there's a spectrum of talent 100 yeah. percent. there's a spectrum of like uh recording quality for sure and and professionalism people that take it serious like you know, like uh, the bands I'm rocking, Nights Like Thieves. Um, but uh, it's all like, you know, how can you go wrong playing music? You know, it's like yeah. with all the chaos and bullshit in, in the world. It's like if you're if you are putting out like, let's say, quote unquote, shitty music, <laughs> at yeah. least you're doing it, man. Like at least yeah. you're trying, at least you're creating, at least you're doing something creative yeah. and productive yeah, and not with just... practice you get better like again nickelback wasn't great when 100%, they first started. <laughs> 100 yeah exactly man it's just like anything yeah. right and he's my daughter plays softball you know she's trying to learn softball it's it's a craft yep 
So you have a music video coming out for one of the songs on the EP. Is it for Aim for the Brain, or which song is it? And when? What can we expect from it? Yeah, it is. So that's going to be released in September. Mario, who we keep mentioning, uh, yep. MarioJRivera.com. This guy is he everywhere, is, by the way. <laughs> he's pretty active in, in the scene, man. He's he's a creative force, dude. Uh, I love yeah. my boy, boy Mario. We could probably uh, Marco Polo him right now. I do Marco <laughs> Polo with him all the time. It's just like a video uh, sort of thing. But um, yeah, so he recorded it uh, downstairs. So our first music video was in my backyard, Young and Dumb. The second one will be a green screen that was shot downstairs. And uh, he's just doing his thing with it, man. He's going to yeah. make it creative and make it fun. It's still being edited. And uh, we're shooting for like a September release for Aim for Their Brain. So check it out. Very cool. It might even be out right now. Ready, Set, Survive, Aim for Their Brain. Check it out. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know, please. Really, that's awesome. I can, yeah. He it. actually, Mario, by the way, was uh, the one who did our season three podcast trailer. So nice, he is everywhere. <laughs> Mario, say hi, dude. Powered by Rock, say hello. You're, on, you're live on the air, buddy. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to. If he responds quick, I'll put him on here. But uh, yeah, All much right. love for those guys. Yeah, a lot of rad local bands. I have to shout out our, our hardcore family down here, too, like Doc Hammer, uh, The Undertaking. Those guys just are hustling. They're touring. Nice. Uh, they, they deserve a, a quick shout out. Very cool. And then I know you guys do have a show. You kind of quickly mentioned it before because we talked about it off air, but you guys are actually playing up in, in, in October uh, with Punk Pioneers, the Queers. Uh, I think it's like 40 years of the Queers, I think, is their, their, their tour. It's like insane that that's – I can't believe that it's – I mean, I'm 40, so like the fact that that band's been around for 40 years is insane. Uh, they also have two other of my favorite bands, Mercy Music from Vegas here, a great band. Uh, actually, that album right there is Mercy Music. No uh, way. And the Venomous Peaks, Pinks, who just put out a new album this year, and they're awesome, uh, all-female band from Arizona. So what kind of, like, how do you feel about this concert? Like, is this going to be kind of like a just an interesting vibe, or are you guys pretty excited about it, or what, what do you guys think about this show that's coming up? Super nervous, dude. I think we're going to get booed off stage. No. <laughs> I didn't know that uh, Mercy Music was uh, from Vegas. I thought they were yeah, from yeah. Tennessee. I yep, love yeah. those guys. Super good. Yeah, I think really I'm actually good. I'm going to get them on Palapalooza before that show. Nice. Uh, we're going to sit them down and interview them real quick and have them do acoustic. But uh, I don't know. Do you think we're going to fit all right in that lineup? They yeah, you will. Yeah. I think so for sure. I mean, Mercy Music is, they, they the look Monica. like, I mean, Brendan's got face tattoos, so he looks like he's straight from out of jail. But he's like one of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. Uh, he, he's, it's not punk necessarily, but everybody labels them as punk just because of how they look, but really they're pop rock and they fucking sound awesome. Um, uh, Venomous Pinks, straight up pop punk, uh, very similar to like, a, uh, kind of like a, I would say like a no effects, but not like in that vein of like, uh, but they, their sound is very no effects. So I think, yeah, I mean, you guys fit right in there. You guys are pop punk enough and the queers, I mean, that's like the old school sound of, <laughs> right. I can't, I can't, I can't think of a, a good enough band to kind of compare it directly, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of there. I mean, everybody, yeah. everybody who knows long enough, who's been in a punk scene long enough knows the queers, they know descendants, they know screeching weasel, these kinds of bands. So I think it's going to be yeah. an awesome show and highlights some cool bands that may not got the attention from the gatekeepers from the 1980s punk scene. Right. So like you guys, mercy music and the venomous pinks for sure. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. We're stoked for it. We're open slot so you know how that goes uh, people are still yeah. going to be sort of trickling in you know 12 people it. in there and the I bartenders get it, dude. yeah it's all good <laughs> um but you know to be on that bill and to be supporting legends and professional bands like that is an honor and yeah i've been performing for a long period of time and there's the, i can't deny that there's always that little thing in the back of my mind like holy shit what if they hate us what if we get nah, what if fucking fine. people throw <laughs> shit at us on stage you know yeah. but whatever but are you gonna you know the I one thing everyone, I've always learned about everyone. music is no matter how many people are there, just play like there's a thousand people in front of you because you yeah. want to impress every single person there. And if they, if, if one person's impressed and nobody else is, they'll tell another five people that, Hey man, I just saw a rad band and that goes a oh, long yeah. way. Yeah. We have a lot of energy live, man. And uh, we, we yeah. don't play very often, dude. Like our last yeah. show was July. And yeah. that's another thing, you know, we could briefly talk about is I'm, you know, I'm older, so I'm a little more like selective, I guess, about our shows. And yeah, and you, you don't know, have to I, travel if you don't want to. Touring is not. We're not trying to make it big. Can... We're not trying to tour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I prefer like Friday, Saturday night shows for our friends, dude, and our our, yeah. our fan base down here. And if we can open for 
a rad band that's gonna bring that's gonna bring in the people and we don't have to worry about it then yeah dude <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'll take it anyone anyone would any local yeah. band would what less so, stress you just have that factor of we're different so we'll, we'll see how it goes <laughs> yeah yeah and we'll bring some we'll bring some heads in there we always do bring we have a pretty good draw down here in san diego so yeah, yeah we're stoked to do it we'll, we'll play a little more of our heavier driven songs like we you know we are no we're certainly no fucking pantera you know but yeah. i feel like we could compare some of our songs with like a rise against the sure. sort of sound you know a little more driving like black and blue and fight so those would be included in the show i i feel we won't be playing how do we escape <laughs> yeah we, you know. as long as you don't actually have people fighting in the audience while playing the song, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> so that's a funny show like we had a fight break out at one of our shows and i was like dude settle down guys seriously Brian, my buddy, is like, Brian, settle it down, man. Like, we're all here to have fun. You guys are drinking a little too much. Just calm it down. Yeah. All right, guys, this is our last song. It's called Fight. <laughs> <laughs> and we fucking went into our song called Fight, and it was pretty It was pretty funny. It's uh, like a inside joke with, with me and the guys, man. That's pretty funny. It's, hey, guys, settle down. All right, this is our last song. It's called Fight. Circle pit. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. So have I missed anything? Are you guys looking forward to anything coming up in the next few months? Uh, any other shows or anything that you kind of want to plug before we go today? No, man, you got it all. Uh, October 7th show at Brick by Brick, but uh, mainly stream our, our new music, man, and follow us on Spotify. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, Ready, Set, Survive. Just Google us and you should be able to find us, man. Thanks a lot for yeah, your time. Really the, appreciate the it. Palapalooza on YouTube. I know subscribe there as well because there's always i mean you don't have to have the attention span like this podcast because it's only <laughs> 10 20 minutes at most usually so <laughs> yeah it's each their own man like the, the yeah. this format is really cool too but yeah you can just search uh, palapalooza it's kind of a a unique word so palapalooza.com palapalooza on spotify but mainly right now palapalooza on youtube <laughs> very cool good luck spelling it no yeah, well, the good thing is we'll add some links below this in the show Sick. notes so that way people don't even yeah. have to figure out how to spell as long as they can actually pull up their phone or look on the desktop wherever they're streaming from so they can just go to the notes below either on YouTube, Spotify, click the link, and then they can you know be off and, and subscribe and everything. So uh, one last question before we sign off. What new music, one, one band or one album, what new music would you recommend people check out right now other than obviously Ready, Set, Survive's new EP? Yeah, uh, local anything sure shout it out uh the first thing that came to mind was yellow wolf's new album i'm, I'm not gonna lie i think that okay. yeah, i don't know if you're into him but he's just uh me and my brother is super into him uh and he's just creative and unique and he does everything from hip-hop to like blues so Ye the new yellow wolf sick also uh unwritten law just released san diego legends down here just released the hum they've been working yep. on it for a while unwritten law released the hum i would check that out uh, I, I think it's really done really well. It was recorded by Joe Marlette down here in San Diego. And then uh, mm. Spray Allen just released a fucking two disc, 25 song album. Spray Allen, which is Wade Human from Unwritten Law playing drums and Eric Wilson from Sublime playing bass. Um, uh, I would I'd recommend you check that out, Spray Allen. Also, these guys just dropped a new single uh, called Lefty, Aviator Stash. Check them out if you're into like indie rock. That was more than nice. one. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I don't know. I think on, on, on the Palapalooza podcast, I think it was uh, Aviator Stash. I, I can't remember, but it might have been yep. them, um, where they were smoking smoking weed right on the show. I was like, right on the show. That's pretty funny. YouTube blocked that episode. No. <laughs> yeah. So we had like a full pool day with them, man. And they were jumping in the pool and drinking a lot. And uh, and then we did this real like improvised jam session where he was using like a, a tequila bottle as like the slide on guitar. Nice. And that's what I want Palapalooza to be, man. Like, you yeah. know, just a fun hangout under a tiki hut. You know, you don't have to play perfect. Fuck around. Smoke yep. some weed if you want to. <laughs> we may even have some people doing some uh, EDM or GMT coming up under the Palapa. So stay tuned. Nice. <laughs> it's tobacco, YouTube. It's just tobacco. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, cool. Troy, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Obviously, Thanks go check out me, the links to the Ready, Set, Survive and the Palapalooza podcast. Make sure to go to the show notes to check all that stuff out because, you know, the, the music's great. Troy's a great dude. The podcast is awesome. If you like podcasts like this one, obviously, it's, it's definitely a good one to go check out. And guys, remember, the, po the Powered by Rock podcast is powered by our listeners. If you want to show us some support, please be sure to subscribe and share the podcast on social media. 
If you ever want to voice your opinion or ask a question, please head to anchor.fm slash powered by rock to leave a message. That link will be in the uh, show notes as well. And it may air on one of our episodes later. You can also make a donation of the podcast to help keeping us make awesome episodes and bringing awesome guests on. Feel free. It doesn't, I mean, we're going to keep doing it regardless, but if you feel like chipping in, feel, feel free. You can find that link in the note as well, in the notes as well. You can see the full video inter, inter, interview, full video interview on YouTube, as well as on Spotify now too. If you want to check out some of our articles, album reviews, lists, and interviews, go to poweredbyrock.com to read our absolutely free rocking blog. You can also find merch and gear where you can pick up and you know pick up some items to play and look like a rock legend. That's our show for today. We'll see you soon for the next episode. Until then, rock on. Supposed to be